Simone Nicole here back at it again with yet another video thank you guys so much for coming to this video to discuss my top five natural hair hacks that I can't stand before we get into the video we of course have to do our subscriber shout out of the day if you are new here we do a subscriber shout out of the day in every single one of my videos because i want to always show you guys my appreciation for you all being here today's subscriber shout out is going to go to case closed they commented on my spend the day with me video and they said love 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 your energy so much that i have been binge watching your videos from a year ago I enjoyed this video and I look forward to more in the future. Be encouraged and be blessed. Thank you so much to you for being so sweet to me and for being so encouraging. And if you would like to be my subscriber shout out in my next video, then well, one, you have to be subscribed. And two, comment on any video of your liking and maybe you could be my next subscriber shout out of the day. And another piece of business, we have to say thank you to Anna Luisa again for partnering with me on a portion of today's video. If you did not know, this is now my second, count it, second time working with Ana Luisa. As you guys know, I am blatantly honest on my channel and I would never partner with a brand that I did not truly believe in. And I don't know if you guys like have noticed the fact that I wear their jewelry um, that I received for the first video that I did. In any video basically where I'm wearing like anything that compliments gold, Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, we got we got the Ana on, okay? In addition to Ana Luisa's pieces being beautifully made, they are also a company that is completely carbon neutral. If you don't know what that means, it basically means that everything that they take from the environment, they put back into the environment. One thing that they make sure to do is to cut out the middleman. So you pay a lot less for the same quality of jewelry that you would get with leading super duper expensive brands so the two pieces that i'm featuring in this video are going to be these beautiful gold hoops and also my lock necklace the necklace is 59 dollars, and right now these hoops are on sale for 49 dollars. and when i tell you you can feel the quality in them as soon as you touch them I just, I love, I love their pieces, genuinely. They are both 14 karat gold plated. Um, and what I love about the earrings too is that they have titanium backings. So if you ever wear like jewelry and you notice that your ears are like itching or red or irritated or getting bumpy, it's probably because you're allergic to like nickel. I would highly, highly, highly recommend you investing in real jewelry. And real jewelry can be so expensive. But I believe that Ana Luisa is the perfect brand to start with because it is set at such an affordable price and you can get everyday staples from the brand. If you would like to get any of the pieces that I have on today, I will make sure to have all of the pieces individually linked down in my description box. And in addition to that, there will be a link at the top of the description box, which will take you directly to their website. I do not have a coupon code this time around. They are actually having a Black Friday sale currently. So if you would like to shop that, just go ahead and click that link. And I hope that you enjoy their jewelry just as much as I do. Okay, now that all of our business is over with, let's get into it today's video so i first want to talk about the idea of hacks i think that hacks kind of implies that you are shortcutting something or that something is made easier by whatever advice is being given to you and i think that hacks can be extremely extremely helpful in a lot of ways but i do also think that if you're looking for hacks you might be trying to do something quick so therefore you're not doing the research that you need to be doing for the hacks I've made the mistake, I'm sure you have made the mistake, but I am here because I don't want y'all to be making the same mistakes that I have made. No matter what hack you find, make sure that you are doing what is best for you and that you are doing what is best for your hair. So the first hair hack that commonly floats around the beauty community is the idea of DIY masks. 
I'm not with it. I think that if you have things in your refrigerator that are going bad and you just want to use them, I think that that could be pretty cool. However, if you're depending on getting your vital nutrients and fixing major hair problems by slathering olive oil and egg and some mayo together, um yeah it's it's gonna be a no for me you need to concentrate on buying products that have been made in a lab by a company that you trust that you know uses good ingredients in their products and that is going to get you the results that you're looking for i just it just doesn't make sense to me not only for like the molecular things that i'm talking about but also for the sheer fact that I just don't want to be sitting around smelling like onion juice and mayo just for the sake of like some shiny hair. No, I can go to the store and get a mask that is full of aloe vera juice, glycerin and mangoes and butters and all of these things inside of a store and slather that onto my head and I think I'd enjoy that more let me tell you if you want to do a DIY mask if you swear that putting an egg on your hair every single month does it for you baby girl please keep doing it all I'm saying is that there is definitely easier ways for you to attain the results that you're looking for by simply going to the store purchasing a product and using that product for exactly what it is made for. So for that reason, I do not agree that making DIY hair mask at home out of food in your pantry is necessarily the best route for you to go. Number two. Oh, I'm gonna piss y'all, I always piss y'all off when I say this. Oil is apparently the answer for everything. And I could not disagree more. Again, people get so personally, deeply offended when I say that. I'm gonna say this so many times in the video because I don't think, I don't know why people don't understand this. If you use it and it works for you, I'm so happy for you. I am simply saying that that is not my experience and I have met so many people that say that their experience is the same way. There are a bunch of YouTubers that don't use oils and there are plenty of people in my comment section talking about how oils do not do their hair justice. So for all y'all oil users try to come for me, please keep on using your oils. I am here to say that I do not think that oils are the end all be all to hair health, period. I think that they do have their benefits. I think that using oil in order to give yourself a scalp massage like on your fingertips to do that kind of thing i think that that can be very beneficial what i do not and will not ever agree with is you taking coconut oil and slathering it across all of your hair and thinking that that is what is going to moisturize your hair oil is not a moisturizer oil is a sealant a point that a lot of people also bring up to me is that not all oils are sealants and that some of them are carrier oils. And I am not well researched or educated enough to give a good rebuttal for that. In the research that I've done so far, I see that carrier oils are mostly talked about in relation to them carrying essential oils into the skin or the body or the hair. Not so much the benefits of other hair ingredients that we commonly see in natural hair products. So I'm not sure if that's relevant to the argument that I'm trying to make because either way it goes, oil and water don't mix. So any oil that you put on top of water is in fact going to seal it in and or at a minimum just not mix. So it will sit on top of the hair shaft. So yeah, to be continued, the conversation on carrier oils. If you must, if you must use oils, then do it in a responsible way. Use it as a last step use it on your ends use it not again as a source of moisture use it as an accessory the reason why i personally do not use oils is because i find that they do nothing for me and it's a very very unnecessary step in addition to that i don't use shampoos very often so it is extremely non-conducive for me personally to be using oils in my hair and then to not be shampooing them out but if you are someone that shampoos on a regular basis then do your thing girl for me personally, I got rid of oils and I saw a tremendous difference in my hair. I changed my entire hair routine and I've done a video on that, which I will have linked right here or right here so that you guys can watch it. But yeah, some of y'all swear by oils. I sure as hell do not. Oh, this, this one really got to me. 
And if y'all have been watching my channel for any amount of time, y'all know that I am pissed. The idea of three, letting your hair almost dry before you apply styling products to it. Who even came up with this? Let your hair get almost dry before you put any product on me? It's almost the antithesis of my entire channel. What do I always preach? Come on, come on. Y'all know what I preach? Only style on soaking wet hair. Where do I always do my hair? In the shower, no exceptions. I'm a little confused. You get the most definition on soaking, sopping wet hair. And whoever is out here telling you, oh, just like step outside of the shower and then like, just like let your hair dry. They're lying and they don't wanna see you succeed. They want your hair to tangle. They want your hair to fall out and they want you to look like a ragamuffin so that they can be cute standing next to you. So don't listen to them, that's not your friend. Get rid of them, kick them out your life. That's not your friend. They're plotting against you. It's not nice. I don't want that energy for you. Style your hair on soaking wet hair, period period, period. Number four is the idea of applying a whole crap ton of product in order to weigh the hair down for elongated results. At the beginning of my natural journey, I was very guilty of it. I would use product after product after product after product because I was just like, I wanna weigh my hair down so that it'll look longer. We've discussed this before, the idea of length being this huge thing like once my hair is long then my natural hair is valid it is so much easier said than done but it is imperative that you begin to get secure and love yourself in every single stage of your natural hair journey which again is way more easier said than done now let me debunk why i feel as though this is not necessary you're spending a lot of money on your natural hair routine and it's just not necessary all you really need in a good routine, styling wise. If you really wanna to get to bare minimums, a leave-in and a gel, period. If you have looser curls, a leave-in and a mousse, that's it. If you wanna throw an extra product in there, which I do, cause I'm a little extra. A leave-in, a styling cream, and a styling gel. That is all you need. I was piling on, I'm not even kidding you, five different products onto my hair when I first went natural because I believed what everyone told me about this natural hair hack, so I had to do it. Why would you sit there and put that many products on your hair when you could just do the bare minimum, wait for your hair to dry, and then stretch your hair afterwards? Everyone, let's do as little as possible. Let's make our wash day routine as easy as possible. You're gonna get your bare minimum products, you're gonna let your hair shrink up as much as it wants, and then you're gonna go in and you're gonna stretch your hair once it is completely and totally dry. And I'm specifically speaking to my type four girls. That is what is gonna help you get the length that you are looking for. Not the idea of piling on 100,000 products. And last but not least at number five, the idea that either you have to use a very, very stripping shampoo to get out all of your product buildup, or on the other side of that, you are to never use a shampoo because they are too drying. Let's talk about this little hack. So let's start on the always use shampoo side. I do not agree with the idea of using a shampoo with extremely stripping and harsh ingredients and surfactants because you want to quote strip the hair. The last thing you want to do to natural hair is to literally strip it of all of its natural oils and the natural pH balance of the hair. So if you do use a lot of heavy products, oil, waxes, butters, beeswaxes, all of those things in your weekly hair routine, then I do recommend making sure to use a shampoo to get that out because at the end of the day, like I said earlier, you are blocking your blessings if you are leaving those things in your hair week after week and not properly cleansing. That is going to lead to you feeling like your hair is perpetually dry or that your definition isn't where it used to be or where you want it to be or you're experiencing frizziness even though you're putting a thousand products onto your hair. You're missing some something inside of your cleansing process or you're over cleansing your hair. Now let's skip to the other side of you just think that it's okay to just co-wash your hair. I don't necessarily agree with that either. I am someone that strives to use only water soluble products. And the only reason why I stopped doing that is because I have my channel now and I try out a lot of products for you guys. I actually have a list on all of my favorite water soluble products. I did a video on it that you guys can go see. The idea of using water soluble hair products comes from the place of 
water is moisture. So in order to get my hair as moisturized as possible, I'm going to give it as much water as possible. And then when I put the products onto my hair, I'm only going to use products that can be stripped out with simply water, eliminating the need for shampoo. Now keep in mind how I said, water soluble, that is the key to being able to strictly co-wash your hair. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Again, these are my thoughts and my opinions. And if you follow these hacks and your hair is down to the ground, dragging behind you, I'm so happy for you, genuinely. All these are, again, are my personal experiences, what has and has not worked for me on my journey, and me sharing it on my YouTube channel. I'm curious to know what natural hair hacks have y'all been told during your natural hair journey that you found to be completely and totally false or you went ahead and tried it and it worked out horrifically for you. Please drop them down below. I am so curious to find out. And with all of that being said, that brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Please make sure you check out the link down below to shop any of the pieces that I am again wearing today with the exception of my nameplate. And make sure you take advantage of their Black Friday sale that they are currently having. Remember to subscribe before you leave. Drop a comment down below with any thoughts that you might have on today's video. Remember to keep positivity in your life because positivity breeds positivity and we have absolutely no time for negativity in 2020. I will see you guys in my next video. Oh, tutorial for this, coming mad soon. Bye guys.